easy overdose here. I'm going to show you how to set up a RAID drive through Windows in this video. You don't need to set up RAID and BIOS. You can do it through Windows, which a lot of people don't know. Just open Folder Explorer and then go to this PC. Uh, it might say Computer right here. Right click, go to Manage. We'll bring this tab up and then you're going to go to Disk Management. And now you're going to pick the two drives that you want to RAID together. Now this is for a recording drive for myself. If you want to do this with a boot drive, you need to do it through BIOS. Windows can't set this up and then become the boot drive. So what we're going to do is highlight the two drives that we're going to use for the RAID. This is going to be a RAID 0. We're going to delete the volume. So we have two drives with unallocated space. Now when you right click on one, you're going to get new options. So new simple volume is what you'd pick if you're just going to make a single standalone drive. Spanned volume is if you have a bunch of drives and you want to turn them into one big drive, they're not going to be any faster. They're just going to be like merged space. You do span volume. Striped volume is what's known as RAID 0. It's where it puts one piece of data on one drive and then the next piece of data on the other drive. So it essentially speeds up your read and write speeds by times two factor, or however many um, drives that you add, you can add more than two. And then your mirrored volume is for uh, backup mainly. It's to uh, usually use that on a boot drive. So if one drive fails, you have a second drive that's basically a clone of the first drive that has all your same stuff. So we're going to do the striped volume. And then this is uh, just opens up the wizard. We go to next. And we're going to highlight the disk. We have one disk over here on the right side already that I selected. And I'm going to add the other disk to it. And click next. Tell it what drive letter you want. Click next. And then uh, get your file system. We got one option there. And then your cluster size. For this, I'm just going to leave it as default. I forget if you, if you change this and you make it bigger or smaller, if it's better for sequential read and writes versus like 4K read and writes. But I'm just going to leave it as default. And then I'm um, checking this perform a quick format. Click next, and then we got a little summary here of all the stuff, uh, all the settings I just made. Then a pop-up that says uh, convert basic disk to dynamic disk. Basically, uh, you can't install an operating system on this drive. Then click yes. Let it do its uh, crunching. And it's done. You can see it popped up right here. Basically a 2 terabyte. So we can close that. And we can run a benchmark on it real quick. Go ahead and get another one open. I will run it on this drive. I'll wait for that one to get done. While it's doing that, I'll uh, open this up, kind of show you the drives that I used. So this is my new one, as you can see it only has 41 hours on it. And this is a uh, Western Digital Blue drive, it's just a 7200 RPM, I think it's got the 64 megabyte cache. Just a one terabyte drive. I think it's 60 bucks. Real cheap right now. 
and then I paired it with this drive, which is, you can see the model numbers look kind of similar, EZEX and EUCX. The EUCX, it's actually a green drive, but it was advertised on Newegg as a blue drive. So I don't know if they had the wrong picture up or they actually sent me the wrong product, but my intentions on ordering it was I was ordering a blue drive, but I got a green drive. But it's not your traditional green drive because it's uh, not a 5900 RPM drive. It's actually a 7200 RPM drive, and it has comparable read-write speeds as a Western Digital black drive which is this drive that I have uh, waiting to benchmark right here. So they're all around 120 on the sequential read-writes um, from the green to the blue to the black. Like I said, this is uh, the uh, Intellarite green, so I don't know uh, the specifics on why this one is better than like a 5900 RPM green, but that's what it is. So, in case you're wondering if it's actually possible to mix and match drives to RAID, it is entirely possible. And the deal with that is the fastest drive in your RAID array can only be as fast as your slowest drive. So if you have one drive that's 120 meg a second read-write and the other one's 100 meg a second read-write, the 120 meg a second read-write drive is going to get... Uh, throttled down to 100 megabytes a second read-write. So likewise, if you had one that's 50, one that's 120, they're both going to run at 50. You're only going to get 100 out of it. So that one's done. Speed. Probably speed this one up a bit. Um, I have all Western Digital drives. There's a black and then a green, and then a, a blue, and then this one, I think this one's a black from like a decade ago, and you can see it's got 41,000 hours on it, and it's been booted almost 8,000 times, and I honestly think that this uh, has rolled over similar to the way like an odometer would roll over in a car, like it hit 99999 and it just rolled back over to zero. And I'm almost thinking it's did that multiple times because this drive has been in my computers for three different builds for almost 10 years. And when I compare them to my black drive and my green drive, these two have 300 to 400 boots on them at 10,000 hours. And they're less than two years old. So you can figure out how many... If you use that same ratio, because I keep my computer on, um, I'm, I might not reboot my computer for like weeks at a time. So if you can figure out how many power ons uh, 8,000 would turn into it at the ratio of, you know, 400 to 10,000, I think that the uh, results here are a little bit skewed on the hours. Uh, speaking of skewed results, I'm actually recording to this drive that's doing the benchmark. Um, but I'm using OBS to, to do the recording. And it has the video card in code on the fly. So it's actually writing a very small file. It's writing less than like one megabyte a second to this drive, so it's not it's not skewing it too much. We'll go ahead and get uh, a couple more of these open. So as you can see, um, more than doubled the sequential read and writes, which is totally what I was after, since uh, I'm going to use the drive to record to, and I want to record basically uh, lossless files, so um, usually around 100 megabytes a second is good for that, depending on the codec that you're using, but 
there's times where 100 megabytes a second isn't enough. The, the bitrate is so high that it exceeds that 100 megabytes a second. So the thing about the cluster size that I was talking about, that is going to be the difference in if you get a better ratio sequential versus better ratio uh, 5, 512K and then 4K, and whatever this 4K QD32 is. As you can see, it um, most of the stuff it doubled. It doubled as fast, which will make editing video better. There's also a factor too that the these drives are uh, that are in RAID zero are fresh, so it's recording to the outside of the platter, versus this drive is 65% full and it's recording and it's not even like a defragged consolidated 65%. Like it's probably a mess. 65%. So that will uh, skew the results just a bit. So this is the solid state drive that I'm doing a benchmark on. I don't normally do benchmarks on solid state, but for the sake of the video, I'll do it uh, one time. And this. Uh, this is the Samsung 840 Pro, 128 gig, and this one's actually rated at, uh, oh, it says it's rated I think 550 megabytes a second on the reads, but only 390 on the writes. So I'm getting less reads than advertised, but I'm getting more writes than advertised. And then it's uh, rated at like 90,000 input outputs a second, which I can't test with uh, Crystal disk work. So when this is done, we're going to do a, the grand finale with the RAM disk. Alright, so here's the RAM disk. This is a 32 gigabyte of quad channel, 1600 megahertz, G Skill Sniper Gaming Series RAM. And this gives you an idea of how fast RAM is compared to how fast uh, one of the, used to be one of the fastest solid state drives is. You got to think solid state drives on SATA 3. SATA 3 is uh, 6 gigabit a second. 6 gigabit a second translates into 600 uh, megabytes ish a second. And I think the uh, technical throughput uh, that's possible for SATA 3 is around 750 megabytes a second, so basically you cannot exceed 750 megabytes a second on SATA 3, and you can see that the RAM is hitting almost uh, you know 9 gigabytes a second on writes. Just to give you an idea how much faster RAM is than the fastest uh, you know solid state drive, that's not really the fastest anymore. But then you can compare uh, the fastest, uh, the Western Digital Black, that's, you know, full, that's supposed to be one of the fastest 7200 RPM drives. You compare that to the solid state and then compare two cheap rated drives. Like these two cheap rated drives, I think cost as much or maybe slightly less than this Western Digital Black which last time I looked for this Western Digital Black, they didn't even make a one gigabyte version of it anymore. It's like discontinued. So you're better off at this uh, day and age to probably get two cheap drives and rate them together if it's uh, going to be like a storage drive or something, or just a, a bullshit drive. All right, well, there you have it. Um, that's how you set up RAID 0, and that is the performance gains that you can see from it and uh, good luck and throw a comment down below if you have any questions thanks for watching